Hello everyone, and welcome back to our series on algorithms. In the previous video, we discussed a class of recursive algorithms known as dynamic programming algorithms. In today's video, we will discuss the other major subset of recursive algorithms known as divide and conquer algorithms. Divide and conquer algorithms take a given problem, divide it into multiple parts, solve each part independently, and then recombine each solution to obtain a final result. In particular, divide and conquer algorithms have two main steps. Given a problem of size n, we first divide the problem into a subproblems of size n over b, recursively solving each, in other words, the division step. We then combine the solutions to the subproblems to solve the larger problem at hand, in other words, the conquer step. Before we discuss important divide and conquer algorithms, which will be the topic of future videos, let's take a brief detour to talk about how to perform complexity analysis for divide and conquer algorithms. We can write the runtime of a simple divide and conquer algorithm as a recurrence relation, t of n equals a times t of n over b plus f of n, where t of n represents the time required to solve a problem of size n, and f of n corresponds to the time required to combine the solutions of all the subproblems. For any algorithm whose runtime satisfies this recurrence relation, we can use the master theorem to compute the runtime complexity. The master theorem states that there are three different cases for the complexity of a divide and conquer algorithm, which satisfy the recurrence relation provided. Firstly, if there exists c greater than 1 and n0 such that for n greater than n0, a times f of n over b is greater than or equal to c times f of n, then t of n is equal to theta of n to the log b of a. Secondly, if f of n is equal to theta of n to the log b of a, then t of n must be equal to theta of n to the log b of a times log n. Lastly, if there exists c less than 1 and n not such that a times f of n over b is less than or equal to c times f of n, then we must have that t of n is equal to theta of f of n. I know this definitely seems like a mouthful, so let's try and understand what each case represents conceptually. To do so, it is useful to visualize the run-through of a divide-and-conquer algorithm as a recursion tree. As you can see, at each layer, the size of the problem is divided by b at each depth until we have a problem that can be solved in constant time. Hence, the number of times we must divide n by b before we get a trivial case is on the order of log base b of n. Furthermore, since the number of problems grows by a factor of a with each depth, we have that the total number of theta1 problems in the final iteration is given by a to the log base b of n, which is also equal to n to the log b of a. With all these observations, we can now intuitively understand what each case of the master theorem actually represents. In the first case, we have that the runtime of the algorithm is dominated by the activity at the leaves, meaning that since each leaf problem has a time complexity of theta of 1, the complexity is simply given by the number of subproblems, which is theta of n to the log b of a. In the second case, we have that the runtime performed at each layer of recursion is effectively of the same complexity. Since the complexity of the last layer is always theta of n to the log b of a, this means that every layer has complexity theta of n to the log b of a. Hence, since there are theta of log n layers, we therefore have that the total complexity is theta of n to the log base b of a times log n. In the third case, we have that the runtime is dominated by activity at the root of the tree, namely the conquering slash merging of the n subproblems. Since this takes f of n time, the overall complexity is therefore on the order of theta of f of n. If you want to prove that the master theorem more rigorously, you can show via induction from the recurrence relation that t of n is equal to a to the j times t of n over b to the j plus the sum of k from k equals 0 to j minus 1 of a to the k times f of n over b to the k. If we take j to be the last layer of recursion, uh, in other words, j equals the ceiling of log base b of n, and recognize that t of 1 is constant, we have that t of n is equal to theta of a to the log b of n plus the sum from k equals 0 to j minus 1 of a to the k times f of n over b to the k. We can then use each of the conditions listed for the three cases of the master theorem to manually rederive the complexities found. Feel free to do this in your own time if you wish, but in the meantime, let's take a look at some examples of how the master theorem can be used to solve recurrence relations. Suppose we have the following recurrence relation. t 
t of n equals 4 times t of n over 2 plus o of 1. This is a relation that could occur, for example, by taking a n by n table and then recursively dividing it into 4 n over 2 by n over 2 sized parts. Pause the video and try to find the complexity of this relation using the master theorem. Well, here we have that a equals 4, b equals 2, and f of n is a constant function. Since f of n is constant, we have that 4 times o of 1 is greater than or equal to c times o of 1 for c less than or equal to 4, meaning that the first case is actually satisfied. Hence, the complexity is given by theta of n to the log base b of a, or in other words, theta of n to the log base 2 of 4, which is simply theta of n squared. As another example, consider the following recurrence relation, t of n equals 2 times t of n over 2 plus theta of n. This is a very typical form of recurrence relation that we will encounter when looking at sorting algorithms in the next video. Again, pause the video and try to find the complexity of this relation using the master theorem. In this case, we have that a equals 2, b equals 2, and f of n equals theta of n. Specifically, we have that f of n equals theta of n, which is also equal to theta of n to the log base 2 of 2, which is equal to, therefore, theta of n to the log base b of a. Hence, we have that case 2 of the master theorem actually applies here, which means that the complexity is given as O of n to the log base b of a times log n, which in this case is simply O of n log n. It's worth noting that the master theorem is not completely exhaustive, and that there are several recurrence relations which cannot be solved using the master theorem, including those that can be solved in the form t of n equals a times t of n over b plus f of n. However, we will not deal with these relations in this lecture series. Now that we are familiar with how to calculate the runtime complexity of divide and conquer algorithms, we will investigate how divide and conquer can be used to construct efficient sorting algorithms in the next video. Until then, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.